gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today I have a really special topic I'd like to talk about, and that is gardening while pregnant. So we always have a lot of challenges as we go through life, but one of the more fun ones is to try to navigate things while we are pregnant and having a hard time just moving and all of the other side effects that go with pregnancy. So I want to take a minute to talk about some of the stuff that I've learned over the last few months from this pregnancy and of course my last one and uh, talk about how to stay in the garden and do so safely. So the first thing to be aware of if you want to be out in the garden while you're pregnant is to check with your doctor and always follow your doctor's advice. But the general rule is that exercise and staying active while pregnant is very important and so gardening is a really great low-key exercise. It's really good for us overall and in general if you've been doing an exercise up until like before you became pregnant then it's fine to continue doing it usually. Obviously there are circumstances and situations where this is not the case so that's why you check with your doctor first but the problem arises when you try to take on a new exercise. If you've never gone and lifted heavy pots and buckets and tarps and stuff like that before, then starting it after becoming pregnant, not a good idea, okay? Don't do that. But if you're out there in the garden all the time anyway, beforehand, then it's usually fine to continue. So as a general rule, it's usually safe, but again, check with your doctor to make sure it's okay in your situation. All right, the second thing I wanna talk about is your body. You have to listen to it. It's really important. Your body will tell you when you have to stop or if you're overdoing it. So move thoughtfully, intentionally, and carefully. As you get into later stages of your pregnancy, obviously bending over is gonna become more and more difficult. So you're going to want to try to squat more often or use long handled tools. Kneeling and sitting is also very beneficial. One of the things I used to do back in the day that I started doing again because it just made sense was I had a little bucket. It was just an old cat litter bucket or something, just an old thing that wasn't needed anymore. And I repurposed it as a place to store my tools. So all of my hand tools are in here, but it's also a great thing to sit on. So I can sit and still do work in the garden. Not quite, I'm at the point, I'm at 37 weeks now, I'm, I pretty much can't even bend over that far anymore. But it was very helpful up to this point and I can also use it to stand up, which is very helpful. But you wanna make sure again to move thoughtfully and carefully, protect your back, do not stoop, do not slouch, and do not bend straight over because you could do a lot of damage that way. Any kind of exercise is gonna get more and more exhausting as your pregnancy progresses. You know, it's harder to breathe, it's harder to move. I know I'm moving a lot slower these days, um, especially in between those practice contraction things that just make you stop dead in your tracks. It can be really hard to work in the garden. The important thing, don't push yourself, okay? Do not try to overextend yourself. Uh, drink lots of water and take lots of breaks. That's very important, especially as your pregnancy progresses, because it's just going to get more and more difficult to keep up with things. Don't try to be as fast as you used to be. It's not going to happen. Know your limits. Listen to your body, and when your body tells you to stop, you should do that. And then also ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you can't do something. Okay? If you can't bend over, don't. Either use a long-handled tool to grab something or find somebody to help you lift something, whatever it is you need help with, ask. Most people are very, um, honestly, kind of over helpful <laughs> telling you to stop and, you know, that they'll do it for you. So that's kind of nice. But it can be a little bit frustrating when you're, you know, like, I can still do that, <laughs> but I totally get the frustration. But people really want to help when they see you struggling, so don't be afraid to ask. Balancing gets more and more challenging as you progress. So that's another reason to move slowly and intentionally and carefully because if you lose your balance, it's a lot harder to catch it. It's a good idea to either stay off of ladders or have a spotter, okay? 
I did prune a cherry tree a few weeks ago that I had to get up on a ladder for, but I went ahead and had another assistant there with me so that she could spot me and make sure that I was safe getting up and down the ladder and that nothing bad happened. Happy to report we're all fine, everybody's okay, I'm okay. But I haven't been on ladders since then because I just don't have much balance right now. Drinking water and staying hydrated is especially important, even more so when you're pregnant. When I um, asked my OBGYN, she said I should be drinking 100 ounces of water a day. That's five of these. I used to think I was doing good if I drank two of them. So keeping hydrated is super important. Make sure to drink lots and lots and lots of water, especially while you're outside working. All right, one more thing about your body. You may be more susceptible to sunburn while you're pregnant, so you want to take precautions of that. Dress appropriately. You might want to wear loose-fitting long sleeves or a hat. You might want to up your sunscreen. Whatever you do to protect your skin in the sun, you'll want to do that. Or try to get your yard work done early in the morning or later in the evening when the sun's not as intense. That's another way to deal with strong sunlight while you're pregnant or any time, honestly. But if you're out in the field all day, obviously that's not an option. But for when you're pregnant, you might want to take that into consideration. One of the biggest challenges I have found while being pregnant is finding comfortable clothes, okay? They make, you know, maternity pants and all that stuff with the stretchy waist that goes over your tummy and it's supposed to stay put and all that, but it totally doesn't. Also, those are usually flimsy fabrics that don't last if you were out in the field working. So I don't wear those while I'm in the garden. You've seen me this year, I found a nice pair of overalls that uh, I actually wore the same ones when I was pregnant with Lily too. They've lasted for years, but I mean, they unbutton on the sides so it can grow with you, but I'm kind of on its last leg too. <laughs> and it's starting to get tight right here. So luckily I'm almost done because these aren't gonna fit much longer. But overalls are the things that I've found are the most comfortable to wear while trying to work being pregnant. So you'll want to find clothes that move with you that don't shift or fall, because I'm telling you, falling maternity pants is the most annoying thing ever when you're in the field. It's terrible. It's supposed to stay where it's supposed to. So if you're pregnant and you're in the garden and you've found some good clothes to wear, let me know in the comments what kind of gardening clothes do you wear while you're pregnant, because I'm sure a lot of other women would like to know the answer to that question. The next big precaution that I want to talk about is pesticides. If you hire a company to come in and spray anything, check with them to make sure that it's safe for you to be outside after they've applied. Some chemicals have a restricted entry period where it's not safe for anybody to be in the area after it's been applied. Much less if you are growing a baby inside you. You do not want to be anywhere near that kind of stuff. It can cause all kinds of problems. So know what you're spraying or what's being sprayed on your property and know if it's safe to be around it after the fact. Personally, I don't spray anything on my property and uh, I wouldn't walk around if I knew something had been sprayed in any area recently. And last but not least, we cannot talk about gardening while pregnant without at least mentioning toxoplasmosis. So toxoplasmosis is a parasite and its life cycle involves mice and birds that a cat will eat, then a cat gets infected, and the cat is actually the host of the parasite. And then the cat poops, and the parasite lives in the poop. And from there, it gets into the things that the mice and the birds eat, and the cycle repeats. Okay, so that's how it gets into stuff. And, uh, and why it's a problem in the garden is because cats love to poop in our gardens. So even if you can keep the cats from pooping in your garden now, most likely there has at least been one or two cats that has pooped in a area, any given area, within the last who knows how many years, okay? So most likely the soil in any given area probably has some of the toxoplasmosis parasite in it. And that's where the problem is for pregnant women 
We're told not to clean out cats' litter boxes while we're pregnant for the same reason. But if you're trying to garden while you're pregnant and you're digging around in dirt that's infected with toxoplasmosis, you can then become infected and that can affect the fetus and there are some side effects, potential side effects that your baby could suffer. So you do want to be careful with that. So in general, the rules to keeping yourself and your baby safe from taxoplasmosis are to wear gloves while you're gardening, if you're digging in the dirt with your hands. Don't touch your face with the dirt. Keep cats out of the garden as best you can. There's, um, you know, tricks and methods to doing that. Some work, some, some don't, just depends on how much of a jerk the cat is that likes to frequent your flower bed. And then wash your hands when you're done gardening and any produce that you bring inside, wash that before eating, okay? Those are the general rules of thumb for keeping yourself and your baby safe from toxoplasmosis while you're gardening. So thanks for watching that video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something and it was of value to you. If it was, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down in the comments section and I try to respond to all my comments. And if you haven't already, remember, please subscribe. I have my channel growing with different topics on flower gardening and green business. Those are the main focuses of my channel. We talk about garden science, botany, all kinds of things like that, as well as just techniques and tricks for how to keep your garden gorgeous all year round. And on that note, Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the garden.